and I'm the director of Novati Tune. Um, today we're going to talk about our product TuneFlow Dynamics, which is a product that we created to help the tuning industry. It's an application that we have uh, designed to be able to run anywhere. So out of your browser, on your mobile device, on your computer, iPhone, Android, it's, it's really universal. TuneFlow Dynamics has a range of features available to users of any nature. Uh, we cater more towards the tuner side of things, but we do also cater towards the customer side as well. So some of our features for our customers, which would also be customers of tuners, would be things like our tuner portal. So our tuner portal is designed to be platform agnostic. And what that means is that it can run on any platform that you choose to tune your BMW with. Um, it supports F and G series. I mean, in reality, it could support any platform that you would choose to use. I mean, even competing platforms in the Volkswagen or, or Audi, et cetera. Like it's not specific to BMWs per se, but the whole feature set and what we've designed to integrate is tailored towards platforms for the F and G series BMW. So platforms like MHD, MG Flasher, MK Flasher, boot mode, even traditional tuning setups with traditional tuning tools like bench tools or OBD tools in that nature, like the Magic Motorsport IXI, for example, um, or some of the other more traditional Windows-based flashing applications that you may remember in the older cars, like the, the older BMWs. So one of the key features with that tuner portal is it has the ability to allow tuners and customers to easily interact with each other. And that was the big thing because in the early days and even currently some tuners will still use emails to send revisions to their customers and communicate with their customers. And it can become very, very, very messy very quickly. And as a tuner myself, I realized this was very frustrating, especially when you've got a massive amount of customers on these platforms and you're sending emails and it just becomes a mess. So I figured, might as well develop my own system and I didn't really want to leverage an existing system such as a ticketing portal or some sort of support portal because it just wasn't going to be specific to what I needed. So we integrated a feature that allows customers to communicate directly with their tuner via a live chat system. It has the ability to share revisions from the tuner to the end user and allows the user to share their stock tune file and their data log as well for the user. There's also an ability in there for what we call the auto reviewer the auto reviewer is something that will automatically review the data log to give the end user a bit of a rough understanding of what's in the data log and how the data log is looking. This is purely an informational tool, but it does allow the end user to sort of understand what's in the log and then they can wait for their tuner to have the proper review before they send a revision to their customer. Now, security was a big, big important thing when it came to this tuning portal because as everyone knows, when you're sending a tune to somebody, you want to hope that it is secured from point A to point B. You wanna make sure that it's secure in the entirety of its journey to, its, to the end user, including the end user themselves. So we support pre-encrypted files on MHD, MK Flusher, MG Flusher. So you can pre-encrypt your file or you can elect for our app to encrypt it for you to be VIN locked to the customer's car. Now, if you would prefer to pre-encrypt it, that's totally fine. Upload your file. We use TLS 1.2 encryption from the point of you uploading it all the way to the server, and then we encrypt the file again when we store the file on the server. From there, the end user will then have encryption to pull the file to their phone or their, or their computer, right? And then it's up to the flashing app to then decrypt that file to be able to flash the, the file to the car. So the end user would not be able to unencrypt these maps, and we have secure storage for these files as well. Outside of that, if you don't want to use encryption, we support that, although it's not recommended, but there are some platforms that customers may use where encryption is not going to be supported or supported easily. Uh, and in that case, you can, although we would recommend you sticking to some sort of pre-encrypted file before you upload it. We also have built-in mechanisms for the tuning portal so that customers and tuners can be notified when there are updates to their tune request. This is a really great way of notifying either party that there is changes ready to be made or changes ready to be flashed to the vehicle. We also have these statuses on your tune request as well. So you can log in and you can view those statuses and you can change those statuses too if you're a tuner trying to notify a customer of a different status. TuneFlow Dynamics also has a data log viewing feature. Now this would be very similar to other open source data log viewers that you would see on the market, Data Zap, Spool Street, those types of data logging tools. But we wanted to make something that was a bit more modern 
and was a bit more user friendly and had a bit more functionality to it. So we created the data log viewer. The data log viewer allows you to upload CSV files from any logging platform, Ecutech, MHD, MG Flusher, MK Flusher, you name it, JB4 even, right? It does support quite a wide a range of platforms and if we don't support it, send us a, a DM and we'll get support added. But the, the, biggest, the biggest functionality with the data log viewer is that you're able to, to visualize up to 120 channels on a, on a computer screen or a mobile phone screen. And you're able to highlight certain channels, select all channels, deselect all channels. You can change it from dark or light mode. But the biggest features is that you can search for individual channels because sometimes when you have a lot of channels and you need to look at which channel are you specifically wanting, it's hard to find. You can go in and you can now search for it. But we also, and this was our, our prize piece for this, was we created a unit of measurement changer. So no longer, from a tuner's perspective, do you need to ask a customer to re-log in a unit of measurement that you may be more familiar with, like PSI or KPA, HPA. You can now set it to a unit of measurement post data log recording. And this makes it really easy for anyone to jump in and have a look at a log, regardless of how it's been recorded. We've made it so you can even scale out your fuel to be relevant to the ethanol or methanol or even gasoline that you're using, whether it's in Lambda or AFR. And this really allows you to speed up your reviewing process of that data log. We also do have the auto reviewing feature available there as well to get a quick snapshot of how the data log is looking to give you some ideas and really just sort of try and give you a quick snapshot of what's, what's going on in that, in that data log. TuneFlow Dynamics also has a feature called the Tuning Assistant. Now the Tuning Assistant was one of our first tools that we created for TuneFlow. And the whole idea of this was to try and take the guesswork and the confusion and the complex logic of these new ECUs in the F and G series cars and try and make it a bit easier to be calibrated. So what we did was we took a lot of the, the factory logic, we worked out a complex mathematical equation and we put it into a nice, easy to understand cell-based, bit like Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets sort of format. So that way you can easily modify the calibration of any BMW or Bosch based ECU that uses the load based calibration or torque based calibration model. So you can easily put in, and we've made it really simple and straightforward. You simply put in your requested gauge boost pressure at a given RPM set point. You put in your target volumetric efficiency at each RPM break point. You set your barometric pressure or atmospheric pressure, however you want to label that. We then go ahead and you put in your target maximum safe IAT temperature, so your intake air temperature maximum. So this would be the maximum temperature you would allow before safety as we begin to scale the tune powers down to save the engine or protect the engine. And then you can choose which engine it is because obviously different engines will have different displacements and that can affect how the calculation is, is worked out. So from there, it'll then work out all the required load boost settings, pressure ratio settings, and torque request settings that are required for all the key tables in the tune. So you would simply just copy and paste them and dump them into your tune on an editor of your choice, whether it's Speedweaver, WinOLS, Tuner Pro, Boot Mode, Stage X, any of those editors are compatible with this. You do need to insert the original optimal torque table from your tune. Some people may know this is the KFM DeWitt table, which is the ID for it in WinOLS. From there, you can simply put that calibration into your tune, and then all you need to do is then edit your fuel, maybe your RPM limiters, your ignition timing limiters, and any other small fiddly bits like Vanos, etc. You can go ahead and start increasing the power of your car that easy. Another feature we have for TuneFlow Dynamics is called the Tune Auto Editor, and this was designed to take all the best bits from our tuning assistant and automate it. So now all you have to do is upload your stock file to the Auto Editor, once you've got your stock file in the auto editor, you simply set the boost pressure by gauge in each RPM set point, your volumetric efficiency per RPM set point, your barometric or atmospheric pressure, depending on how you want to label it, and your target maximum intake air temperature before safeties are applied. From here, it'll automatically scale out the file for you. So you just hit save, and then your modified file is ready to go in a matter of seconds, and you can download it. We also have implemented additional features such as high pressure fuel pump configurations, injector configurations, math delete configurations, verbal configurations, DCAT configurations, OPF delete configurations, and we have more planned. 
An example of something that we do have coming up soon would be an electronic wastegate delete. So we've bundled in a lot of features into this auto editor to help automate tuners work. So all they really need to be editing in another editor is going to be something like fuel, your ignition, and maybe your, your cam control. We even take into account RPM limiters. So you can set an RPM limiter. You can even set the maximum thermostat target for your max cool mode, as you may call it. Another few features we also have with TuneFlow Dynamics is we have an E85 or ethanol calculator for those that want to manually work out within their BMW how much ethanol they need in their tank or how much gasoline they need in their tank to make a specific ethanol mix. We also have an A2L or XDF language translator. Now this differs a lot from the translators found in WinOLS. Instead of just taking key words and replacing them with an English equivalent, we translate the whole table name or the table description from a source language to your target language. And this allows you to keep the entire structure of the name so that you don't lose any definition in the, in the name of the table and the, or the description of the table during the translation process. And we also allow translation to a few other languages as well. We're not limited to just German to English or Danish to English or anything like that, or English back to German. We also allow you to translate to a variety of other languages. Now, because those applications reading those files don't natively support, say, Chinese or Greek or Hungarian, for example, we use a technology called transliteration. So transliteration allows you to use English characters for the other opposing languages' words. And the reason why is because some languages, such as Greek, for example, those symbols in the Greek language cannot be read or identified in those tuning applications. So we use the English letter equivalent to allow you to have as close to a complete translation in another language than what would be traditionally supported. We also have a dashboard and user profile functionality as well. This allows the end user, whether it's the tuner or the client, to see some statistics about how the app is being used, how many downloads they have, how many uploads they've uploaded in a seven day period, and also allows them to edit their user profile, manage their subscription, or just view generalized stats. Another big feature we have with TuneFlow Dynamics is we have the VIN registry. Now, the VIN rating registry was a way for us as tuners to be able to rate clients. Likewise, as clients can rate us on Google reviews, Facebook reviews, or anywhere on the internet, I thought it was about time that businesses had the ability to review their customers because unfortunately, there are some customers that don't always play by the books. The VIN rating registry is a functionality that allows a tuner to rate a VIN number of a vehicle there are procedures to clear that rating should the customer sell the car to a new customer, and that would require a support ticket into our support mechanism. But the idea is that it's a public registry that anyone can view, they can view the history of that car. It's gonna be apparent if it's been tuned or not, if it's got a rating on there. It can also give you a good indication of how the last customer may have treated the car, but it also gives an indication to tuners what this customer might be like for them to accept the tune from. We've also got it built in so that in the tune portal, if a tuner receives a tune request from a VIN that's got a really low rating, it will notify the tuner and give them an option to proceed or to, to decline the request. So another feature that we've built out too with TuneFlow is a ticketing support system. So this is like any support ticketing portal, but we decided to incorporate this into TuneFlow along with our existing ticketing features so that it was easy for customers to raise tickets from a tune request. And it was also easy and centralized for tuners to have some sort of a support mechanism in place to help service their customers. <clears throat> so in here, you can view a ticket, you can view its status, you can send messages, <clears throat> you can upload files as required. You can then mark a ticket resolved once you've resolved it. And you've got obviously your create, created and your last activity date. It was designed to be able to give tuners and customers an easy way to get support requests in for their tunes. We've also got features coming in TuneFlow Dynamics that will allow direct API support to flashing platforms. So you can have the flashing platform upload a data log from the app directly into TuneFlow. We're also gonna add some functionality for tuners called SFTP selection. So that's secure file transfer protocol. This would give a tuner the option, should they choose it, to have the files uploaded and stored in an FTP share that they manage rather than stored on our own servers. Now this would then have the onus of security and file management on the tuner themselves. However, it allows the file management to be easily uploaded from their computer 
to a centralized storage that they manage. And then we would pull that file securely using credential based authentication that the tuner would need to specify using an API key or something of that matter. This allows the tuner to leverage the abilities and the functionality and the automation aspects of TuneFlow Dynamics, but gives them the flexibility to control where the data is stored. Because I understand some tuners still, even with the security that we've implemented in TuneFlow, may be skeptical about how those files are stored and whether or not we have access to them. When we created TuneFlow Dynamics and the Tuner Portal, we made it to help automate and ease the tuning process, the remote tuning process for the end user and the tuner. It's a lot of work to have implemented all of this functionality. We've been doing this now for two years. It doesn't make sense for us to have created an environment that would allow for those files to be accessed easily. It's even challenging for us to decrypt from our own decryption algorithm, let alone whether or not it's been encrypted on a relevant flashing platforms encryption program. So we really tried to make sure that security was top notch so that even it was a challenge for even internal members of TuneFlow to even access these files. But we want to give the tuners more power and we want to be able to give you guys the opportunity to set your file storage location yourselves. So should you choose to use something like an Azure storage blob and AWS file share and SFTP share, we're going to integrate a lot more functionality to really give tuners the power to automate their workflows and really make it a seamless experience for their end user in the process. We also gave tuners some features as well with regards to a tuning matrix and Bosch abbreviations page. For tuners, the Bosch abbreviation page will help you decipher the Bosch abbreviations in tuning table names and calibration IDs so you can better understand what table is designed for what function or what purpose. With the tuning matrix, this gives you a list of table names or table IDs that you can look up in your tuning editor to create basic stage one or stage two mappings. Stage three and greater typically require a lot more advanced calibration and more experienced tuners would be required to work out and customize those tables to suit their needs as every car and every EC model may be different for those sorts of functionalities. 